Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. My name is Fatima Weir, um, and I'm delighted to welcome you guys to the Celebrezzi Building, a testament to the collaborative efforts of my fellow union members who helped to build this. My union journey started with a pre-apprenticeship program called Use of ASAP years ago, introducing me to the realm of unions, particularly Smart 33, Sheet Metal Workers Union. Graduating from a five-year apprenticeship program paved the way for me to become a journey person and entrepreneur, specializing in duct cleaning and HVAC. Not only am I still a card-holding member of my local, but um, I also have a mechanical contractor's license from the state of Ohio, which is actually a pretty big deal. Throughout this journey, Smart 33 has been a steadfast ally, providing invaluable support by pairing me with seasoned members, mentors, and the guidance of their director of partnership development, Eli Backus, and his staff. It is said that great leaders build cultures and develop people. That's what happened for me during my years in the union with the, leader, with the leadership of then President Mike Coleman, which, who has moved on to become general president of SMART, sheet metal, air rail, and transportation workers. I believe he laid a foundation conducive of craftsmanship, hard work, greatness, and inclusivity that was carried on with the current president, Tim Miller, and all of the business agents under him. The union support has not only been a financial anchor, anchor but also a catalyst for fostering diversity and inclusion in my professional path. I'm deeply thankful for everyone who supported me. My team, my family, my brother um, Ken, my son Chris, they drop everything to help me, so I really appreciate that. I also have a mentor, um, Glenn Shoemate. Um, he's always a phone call away. Working on projects with project labor agreements, like this one at hand, enables people like me to earn a livable wage along with um, my employees while contributing to increased minority participation. It also allows me to bridge opportunities for people of color facing barriers in the field. My journey as a journey person and sheet metal worker has allowed me to build a robust network of people in the field as well as in business. President Biden recognizes the pivotal role unions and project labor agreements play for workers and for people like me. With the support of the, um, with his support for the ARP, CAA, a diverse contractors association, can further help develop and support around 25 businesses, contractors to grow. The efforts along with a plethora of individuals with like minds continue to make it possible for people of color and for females to gain access to apprenticeships, which are very important in a white male dominated industry that years ago they may not have been able to enter. And today, I am proud to introduce a leader, a woman of color herself, who will announce another way that the Biden administration is supporting the high quality work that unions do on time and at or under budget and supporting the high quality jobs that put people on a path into middle class. So without further ado, let's hear it for Acting Secretary of Labor, Julie Sue. Thank you so much for that lovely introduction, Fatima. Thank you for all that you do and all that you represent. Um, and hello, everyone. Hello, Cleveland. It's so great to be with you all today, especially with so many union members and labor leaders. Um, the work that you do uh, has always been important, but never more so than in this moment, when President Biden is investing in an infrastructure decade. 
and you and your members lay pipe 30 feet underground and build structures 100 feet in the air. And so on behalf of the president and a grateful nation, thank you for building America. Um, I'm going to start with a term that the people in this room know well, project labor agreement. These are the agreements before any work even begins on a construction project that bring together contractors, subcontractors, unions to make sure that the work gets done right. Uh, that it is done in a way that is going to uh, prevent disputes, injuries, delays, and that there's good wages are guaranteed. Um, but the most important thing is that project labor agreements ensure that projects are done on task, on time, and on budget. Now, outside this room, many people may not know what a project labor agreement technically is, but they can see them at work all across America. From the Tennessee Valley Authority, where union workers keep the lights on and the electricity flowing to more than 10 million people across the Southeast to New York City for a project to renovate public schools, which saved taxpayers an estimated $221 million and with no construction worker injuries. From Prince George's County in Maryland, where the MGM National Harbor Casino was built with a local workforce, and nearly $370 million worth of contracts went to minority and women-owned businesses. Two, Today in Lansing, Michigan, where construction workers are building the site that will produce batteries for electric vehicles. And at that job site, there are three generations of union carpenters, a grandfather, a father, and a granddaughter, who are working together and who all know the value of a good union job. All of these projects were built with PLAs in place. That means that they are being done or were done on task, on time, and on budget, with highly skilled workers paid union wages, with investments in local communities, and with strong, building strong families and strong communities. So imagine if this was business as usual. Imagine if all major construction projects that the federal government invests in were built right built on time, and built to last. Well now, we don't have to just imagine it. Today we are taking a big step in making it actually happen. And that's why we're in Cleveland today. The Biden-Harris administration is here to announce a final rule that requires project labor agreements on nearly all federal contracts valued at or above $35 million. So first and foremost, this rule is good for government. Why? Because project labor agreements employ highly skilled workers. They allow for planning at the very beginning before the ground even breaks on a project for contractors, subcontractors, and unions to plan ahead, to know what they're getting into. And they help then ensure a consistent supply of well-trained workers. And all of that is why work on PLA projects is always done right. It prevents delays, it prevents disruptions, and so this new rule is good for government. It helps us deliver and ultimately to save taxpayer money. But that's not all. Project labor agreements are also good for workers in the way that Fatima just described. Not just because of good working conditions and good wages and safety on the job, but also because many PLAs, like the one covering this federal building, support equitable pathways into good union jobs, registered apprenticeships, pre-apprenticeships, and hiring from the local community. Project labor agreements are also good for employers who do right by their workers, so that we're rewarding contractors who operate with high standards. And this helps build companies who are doing the right thing, their value and their competitiveness for the future. Just like Whiting Turner, the prime contractor for this project who is here with us today. As contractors, they know firsthand what a difference PLAs can make on getting a large scale project done economically and efficiently. And they demonstrated that right here by committing to a PLA for this GSA funded project. 
Finally, PL project labor agreements, PLAs, are also good for communities. That's because with this new rule, federal dollars will be driving big federal construction projects in which community members can know that they're going to be done on time, on task, on, on budget. We're, we're gonna deliver real things in real ways that are good for communities, where their family members and their neighbors are working on jobs where they can make enough to then spend money back in their local community. So this rule is designed to create real change. We're not just encouraging project labor agreements, we're requiring them on most large scale projects. And now that we have this new regulation, we expect that PLA projects are going to flourish across the country. Just as President Biden has said, we are going to build a better America and we're gonna build it right. And we have a lot to build together, we have a lot of work to do, and that's why the Biden-Harris administration is all hands on deck in this moment. That's why I'm joined here by my friends and co colleagues, Jason Miller from the OMB and Robin Carnahan, our GSA administrator, as well as Congresswoman Brown and Mayor Bibb. So today is the start of something big and we're starting it right here in Cleveland. We're proving that what makes good sense for government also makes good sense for workers, for business and for communities and it's good for our country. So thank you all so much for being a part of it and we look forward to continue to build together. And now I'm very pleased to introduce and to be joined here by Dave Wondolowski, who is president of the Cleveland Building and Construction Trades, who's been there for more than a decade. Uh, Dave has been a champion for workers and for good jobs in this community, and we are so proud to be here with you and to work with you, Dave. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Acting Secretary Sue. Thank you for all that you do for America's workers in the labor movement. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor to be up here today with impactful leaders like Secretary Sue, OMB Director Miller, and GSA Administrator Carnahan. I'm also glad, of course, that the mayor's here and our beloved Congresswoman Chantel Brown. I'm honored and privileged that Cleveland is the site of this announcement. Our organization has partnered with owners and developers using project labor agreements with success to build nearly every major construction project in our city over the last 30 years. We currently have more active projects under PLAs than we've ever had at one time. Cleveland has a rich history of supporting workers, especially those in the building trades. Both the city of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County have made significant financial contributions to help fund our industry's own pre-apprenticeship program appropriately named Cleveland Builds. On behalf of every council across the U.S., I applaud today's announcement. This last step for the executive order on project labor agreements is welcome news for all workers, union and non-union. We have been all ears since two years ago when the Biden administration made this initial announcement. The inclusion of project labor agreements further levels the playing field for workers and responsible contractors in addition to increasing the probability for federal government projects to com be completed on time and on or under budget, which is re the responsible use for taxpayer dollars. I can only hope that future pro uh, government project labor agreements will take a page out of the page here in Cleveland, where we work closely with developers, contractors, and the community to ensure that everyone is best served by the project. <laughs> Now I have the honor of introducing a longtime friend of the building trades, GSA Administrator Robin Carnahan, knows us and gets us. Nobody is better to be leading the GSA regarding their hopeful increased use of project labor agreements on their facilities than Robin Carnahan. As Administrator, she has made it her mission to deliver the best value in real estate, acquisition, and technology services to the government and the American people. Before assuming her role as administrator, her career spanned the public and private sectors, and she proudly served as uh, the people of Missouri as the Secretary of State. She's a trusted and innovative advocate for America's workforce, and she's our friend. Administrator Carnahan, it's an honor to see you here again in Cleveland. I enjoyed your comments at NAPTU's, uh, NAPTU's legislative conference earlier this year. Brothers and sisters, please give a warm building trades welcome to Administrator Robin Carnahan. Thank you. 
Well, thank you all so very much for being here. How exciting. I, you know, I, this is my third time to Cleveland this year, and I am actually, I told the mayor, I hope this is my last one this year. <laughs> but Secretary Sue, thank you very much. Jason Miller, thank you for being here. David, thank you. Congresswoman, Mayor, all of you, uh, it is a great honor. I couldn't be happier uh, to be back and talking about this subject. At GSA, we've been using project labor agreements for a long time. But this announcement today is about way more than GSA. This is a government-wide initiative to make sure that large building projects and construction projects across America use these sensible contracts. It is literally GSA's job to help deliver on the president's promise of investing in America. As he always likes to say, from the bottom up and the middle out. And right now we have the opportunity to do just that because we have momentum and money at the same time. Doesn't always happen. And so here at this building, we have a number of tenants. So I want to talk about that a little bit. But one is the Veterans Benefits Administration. And that's what, we, that's what this space is being built out for. The job of that agency is to help veterans get access to their benefits. And this is something that matters not just for the veterans in this region, but around the country. And through this project labor agreement, it was about $48 million to do a number of floors here. We're taking out asbestos, we're upgrading mechanical systems, where, as you can see, some of the progress ar around you is continuing. But it's put to work electricians, insulators, iron workers, laborers, painters, pipe fitters, plumbers, sheet metal workers, Masons and lots of others, about 350 different folks have been involved in this project and these renovations. It's a great example of what investing in America looks like. It's what the president thinks about. When he thinks about investing in America, he thinks about jobs. And this is a great example as well because it's about the hardworking people of our country, union members, investing and putting their time and talent to work for the country. It's about advancing the mission of an important agency that serves veterans. And it's thanks to these PLAs that the government is getting the best value in all of it. So to top all of this off, I know that uh, just here in uh, uh, this building, by doing these investments, we're going to be saving money for the taxpayers because of this renovation. It avoids rent payments that we would be making elsewhere. So we all know that these project labor agreements are a big payoff, and today's announcement is just to celebrate all of that. Um, it's, it's interesting, as I travel around the country, I see these kinds of actions taking place everywhere. And it's just a thrill, because it's an opportunity for, as I said, the working people of America to feel like their government is asking them to help, to step up and do a part to help invest in America. I saw that when I went out to the job training center, IBD, IBEW, at Local 38 uh, a couple of months ago, right here in Cleveland, where they're training the next generation of building trades. And I know that the, lots of the trades have these centers around the country, and I never cease to be impressed about how union members are building the next generation. They're passing on these skills and these trades, and that's making a huge impact for our country. They're learning about energy efficiency. They're, when I was out at the, at the job training center, everyone there was trained to put solar on rooftops. Everyone there was trained to connect, interconnect to the grid. These are the, these are the jobs of the future, and they're making a big difference. Now, we know these PLAs are a big win for everyone. Uh, for GSA, it means that we're going to be saving uh, money for taxpayers. We're going to be getting a new, more diverse set of workers on these projects. Um, but, but we also know that it makes a huge difference for workers. And I, I just want to close by saying that the, pri the president often says that there's nothing we can't do, we can't accomplish if we work together. So I just want you to know I look forward to working with folks here in Cleveland, but across the country to create more good paying union jobs. Um, and one last little vignette, I never will forget, I was, I was with a, 
a gentleman who runs a really big construction company. And I said, uh, Bob, what do y'all do about project labor agreements? He works all over the country. And here's what he said. I want to read this quote. He said, we use PLAs all the time because I want the highest skilled workers on my projects. When we use trained union labor, things get done right the first time. We don't have to worry about adding costs or adding time to redo the job. For us, it's just good business. So, I will tell you, at GSA and now across the government, it's good business for us, too. And it's good business for America, so let's get to work. And Jason Miller, head of OMB's management side, he, I always talk about it, is kind of my boss. Uh, I appreciate you being out here. He helps get all of these projects done across the government and uh, come up and talk to us about the President's Initiative. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is fantastic to be here, to be here with all of you. Uh, an absolute pleasure. There's no better time to be in Cleveland than in December. Uh, being here with, uh, with Acting Secretary Sue, Administrator Carnahan, my colleagues, with the Mayor, Congresswoman Brown, uh, with representatives and leaders from labor, from business. Uh, this is fantastic, and I'm serious. December is a great time to be here, and it's a great time for this specific announcement. I know, I happen to be from another Midwestern city. It starts with the sea, it's on a lake, it's about five and a half hours that way. Uh, yes, I'm aware that there was a game yesterday between the Browns and the Bears, and I will say the better team won, and I wish you all the best on the march toward the playoffs. But what you've heard, what we're here announcing today is about building things the right way. And what we build improves lives, improves communities, and strengthens families. It is a demonstration of the work the President and his administration are doing, investing in America. Now, the federal government spends $50 billion per year on construction projects, $50 billion per year, like the project here. Uh, this includes 150 new large-scale construction projects every single year. We work in every part of America. Federal employees are serving Americans in every county in America by requiring the use of project labor agreements on major federal construction projects. This new regulation that we're finalizing today will make sure that the projects the federal government constructs with taxpayer money, we are getting the very best bang for the buck. As, we've, as you've heard, as you all know well, PLAs improve timeliness. They lower costs, they increase quality. That's why we're requiring them uh, in federal construction projects. It's just good business, as Administrator Carnahan said. There are projects all over the country that can benefit from the maintenance of nuclear sites to military-based constructions to waterways and flood projects. PLAs resolve management coordination challenges on the front end that can otherwise lead to delays that can increase costs. PLAs ensure a steady supply of skilled workers for the project. PLAs raise the quality standards for contractors that are bidding on the project. And PLAs reduce uncertainty in the contracting pro process. Now, PLAs are not new. They have a long legacy in both the public and private sectors. In fact, federal agencies have used PLAs on some of the very largest scale federal construction projects. Tennessee Valley, Valley Authority projects dating back uh, decades in the east to the Hoover Dam in the west. At a time when we are making historic investments around the country, we absolutely must be making those investments and building them in the right way so that they are on time, so that they are on task, and so that they are on or under budget. PLAs deliver for the government and they deliver for workers. Now, when we build, we should also build projects with products and materials that are made in America. President Biden. 
President Biden, on taking office, said that his commitment to Made in America would be real. It would be more than just empty words. And he has fulfilled that commitment. We have strengthened by American rules, including creating the first ever Made in America office in the White House at the Office of Management and Budget. Through this work, as part of the President's Investing in America agenda, we are str uh, supporting strong, resilient supply chains, supporting American manufacturing and good paying jobs across the country. Our federal investments are repaving roads, rebuilding bridges, and bringing clean water to families and communities in every corner of America. In fact, the President's Investing in America agenda has led to a manufacturing boom that's attracted over 600 billion, 600 billion in investments from the private sector to make things in America. That is what building things the right way means. Since taking office, President Biden has been steadfast in his support of workers. I know you've heard him say this. He intends to be the most pro-union president, leading the most pro-union administration in American history. President Biden says it often, the middle class built America and unions built the middle class. So thank you. Thank you for being here together. I look forward to our work continuing to build a better America going forward, our future made in America together. I have the privilege and the honor to introduce your Congresswoman, Congresswoman Chantal Brown. Good afternoon, everyone. This good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a full circle moment for me. I want to thank you, Deputy Director Miller, um, and it is an honor to have Acting Secretary of Labor here with us. I want to just point out, um, I had an opportunity to meet Fatima. It was a couple years ago when she probably was first entering the work. So this is really a full circle moment. To have you back, um, to have you here, um, uh, Madam Secretary, is such an honor and a privilege. Dave, you know, we go way back on this issue, so I could not be more thrilled that we are seeing this work come into fruition. Now, Administrator Carnahan, we're gonna have you come back as many times as we need to have you come back, <laughs> as long as you're bringing good news. <laughs> And, um, and again, thank you, Deputy Director, and it's always a thrill to be in the company of my brother, the mayor of the city of Cleveland. From day one, the administration has shown their commitment to, as shown their commitment, as President Biden always says, from building our, middle, from building our economy from the middle out and the bottom up. The commitment to working people is visible across every agency and department. And it is important to point out, building an inclusive economy is also about expanding opportunity to every region. So I appreciate that the administrator is here in Cleveland for this announcement because we are also building from the middle out geographically. Prosperity and opportunity should not be limited to Wall Street, Silicon Valley, or just a few resorts in Florida. And this administration gets that. Thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure law, we have federal funding coming in for Cleveland Hopkins, Hopkins Airport, for our RTA transit system, and for our roads and bridges. Thanks to the infrastructure law, we have funding coming in to clean up Lake Erie and funding to remove 100% of the lead pipes in Cleveland. And we are also connecting people in some of our poorest neighborhoods to high-speed internet thanks to this law. This is going to be an infrastructure decade here in Northeast Ohio. And we don't just value the work, we value the people who do the work. Today's announcement is right in line with the labor spirit that is part of who we are here in Northeast Ohio. Project labor agreements can be a win for the builder, a win for the workers, and a win for the community. They're also one of the most powerful tools we have to ensure that work sites look like the communities around them. And in lots of places, if you don't fight for diversity, if you don't fight for people of color, black and brown, and female workers and contractors, it's not going to happen. But good government is about setting a higher standard. This is what the moment is all about. This is what this announcement is all about. Good jobs, good wages, great projects that deliver 
for everyone. So this, this is good news for the working people, good news for Northeast Ohio, and good news for the country. And with that, it is my honor to hand it off to Mayor Bibb, a tremendous partner and a champion for all people, but especially the working people here in Cleveland. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Congresswoman. We are just so lucky to have your voice in Washington, D.C., fighting for Clevelanders every single day. I want to thank the Deputy Director, uh, Jason Miller, Administrator Carnahan, and Secretary Sue for coming to Cleveland. Your first trip to Cleveland, Madam Secretary, uh, and to pick Cleveland for this announcement, I think, speaks to the great momentum we're building in our city to fight for good paying jobs, but fight for good paying labor jobs all across our city. And our conversation this morning, uh, the Secretary and I were talking about what really attracted her to work for this president, our president, Joe Biden. And she said something very important. She said it was President Biden's commitment to build the most progressive pro-worker agenda we've ever seen in our country. And he's delivered at every step of the way in getting that done. And we are trying to do our part here in the city of Cleveland to make sure we can advance equity and advance good paying labor jobs all across our city. First and foremost, we spent $10 million of American Rescue Plan investments to build a workforce development initiative solely focused on jobs and the built environment. So what does that mean? It means millions of dollars to attract and inspire the next generation of trade workers from CMSD. It also means leveraging a $20 million opera investment to work with IBEW to lay next generation fiber in every part of our city so that every family has access to high speed internet and broadband and fiber technology. We're also gonna break ground in a couple of weeks on the first PLA project sponsored by the city of Cleveland, the first project in nearly 30 years in our city. That just shows you our commitment to ensuring that we're investing in good paying jobs in every part of our community. And so today's announcement is not just about the, the investments. It's not just about putting more cranes in the sky. This is about hope. This is about what my friend Senator Sher Brown calls the dignity of work. And if we can do it in Cleveland, we can do it everywhere across this great nation. And so I'm going to have a call, of act, a call to action for all of you in this room. We got to share the gospel. We got to share the good news. Because for a lot of Americans, they don't know how this president and vice president and this administration has delivered for folks in our community and all across the country. And so as we continue the work ahead, let's share the gospel and the good news of what we're doing and let's keep investing in Cleveland and in our great country. Thanks so much, we appreciate it.